Hi everyone, welcome to our module 3 which is all about solutions and uh, colligative properties. So we are already in this part of our term wherein we deal with the essential question how must chemicals be used safely and responsibly. All right. And then we know that chemistry literally has all the solutions. We make the wise use of the chemicals by looking into the right amount, the right dosages, and the right concentrations. All right. So that's why we have to study or look into aqueous solution chemistry. Okay. So in this video, we will be describing how solutions form, especially aqueous ones, and then examining the effects of the temperature and pressure on the solubility of a liquid or gas, and express the concentrations of solutions using different units. So this is one whole playlist. We are trying to achieve the following uh, learning targets. So first, let us deal with learning target number one. How do solutions form? Okay, so solutions are homogeneous mixtures of two or more pure substances and you have a lot of examples there but what we do know is that in a solution the solute is dispersed uniformly throughout the solvent such that we will only be able to see one phase all right so in here uh, you have the state of the solution whether it's a liquid solid or gas and the state of the solvent and the state of the solute so take note that the solute is the particle or is the compound present at the lesser amount and the solvent is uh, present at the greatest amount okay so the solvent in a way uh, is incorporated by the solute all right so an example here is air Okay, so air is an example of a gaseous solution. You take note also that uh, whatever the state of the solvent is, that's also the state of your solution. All right, whatever the state of the solvent is, is the state of the solution. So for example, you have a rubbing alcohol in water. So that is an example of a liquid to liquid solution right and then salt in water that's very familiar or sugar in water that's solid to liquid solution so the liquid there is our solvent and the phase is a liquid one and we can also have solid to solid solutions for example if we melt a uh, silver and gold together and they come up with a homogeneous mixture right so in here we have a solid solid solution and the state is solids uh, amalgams also or compounds with mercury that's a uh, one example okay so here are some uh, basic terms that we need to know so when you say soluble or insoluble these are generally used for solid and gaseous solutes all right so we whenever the solute is a solid or a gas we uh, we use the term soluble or insoluble so it indicates that the solute dissolves for soluble or does not dissolve for insoluble in a particular solvent. Now, when we deal with liquid solutes, they have another term for that. Uh, we consider them to be miscible or immiscible. So for those miscible solutes, miscible liquids, uh, that that is the one that dissolves in the solvent. And if it's immiscible, then the solute is never soluble in the solvent. And take note also that um, when you talk of solubility, it can be partial solubility or complete solubility. So that means some materials can be slightly soluble in their solvents. All right? Slightly soluble. So we, re we try to review on what... Uh, causes uh, the solution process so intermolecular forces have a very uh, significant effect on uh, the way a substance dissolves okay so dissolution is the process by which a solute is incorporated in a solution but how does a solute dissolve in a solvent okay so first one we have to consider is that whenever you have uh, for example an ionic compound like table salt there are ion dipole forces okay or ion dipole intermolecular forces of attraction so it's the attraction between an ion 
and the oppositely charged pole of a water molecule okay for, uh, for we know that water is a polar uh, molecule so it must have a partially negative end and a partially positive one so what happens here is the partially negative end of water attracts the cations or the positively charged ions of the crystal lattice for ionic compounds okay, causing the crystal structure to break down so again there is an interaction between the ions and the dipoles of the solvent so we call it a di ion dipole forces all right and this is only for ionic solutes in a polar solvent remember that dipole dipole uh, imf dipole dipole interactions are for polar solvents okay so it's good to review also on the molecular geometry and molecular polarity so when you say molecular geometry that's the shape a molecule takes in three-dimensional space and this is predict uh, predicted by Vesper theory and the molecular polarity is the overall polarity of a molecule or the, the net dipole for a particular molecule and uh, one familiar example is water so uh, we know that because of the free or the the electrons here the pair of electrons for water molecule then it must have a bent shape and therefore there is a net dipole moment okay going towards the oxygen atom so that makes water polar and take note also that like dissolves like uh, polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents while nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents and so uh, we also consider uh, another type of interaction the, the specialized type of dipole dipole interaction which is hydrogen bonding so this is the second intermolecular force that is considered in the solution process so hydrogen bonding allows polar covalent molecules such as ethanol isopropyl alcohol to dissolve in water so take note that for example you have here the structure of ethanol the structural formula of ethanol which is the active ingredient for rubbing alcohol by ethanol and then you have the OH bond okay you have this OH bond here you take note that this bond okay this combination can interact through hydrogen bonding with uh, water with what uh, flu uh nitrogen and fluorine all right so hydrogen bonding so we can review on imf so that is one intermolecular force that is also considered the third one are london dispersion forces and this is for non-polar solutes in a non-polar solvent so again if you remember this is a result of the instance instantaneous uh, uneven distribution of electrons in a particular atom okay in an electron cloud okay so th these uh this is particularly for nonpolar solutes or solvent combinations for example oil and uh, cyclohexane and all our other larger uh a nonpolar molecular nonpolar organic compounds okay mostly for organic compounds so take note that it, the intermolecular forces between the solute and the solvent particles must be strong enough to compete with those between solute particles and those between solvent particles. Okay, so uh, the inter for example, the interaction between water and the ions of salt must be stronger than the interaction. Okay, the IMF of water to water or uh, the interaction between the ions in a salt uh, compound all right so as the solution forms the solvent pulls solute particles apart and surrounds or solvates them okay so there is a process which we call solvation wherein the uh, water molecules in this case uh, surround the ions okay so this is uh, 
in here we say that the sodium ion and the chlorine ion are solvated and how does it happen in the sodium ion it is attracted to the partially negative end of the water molecule partially negative end, the red circles while for the anions they are attracted to the partially positive end of the water molecules the H okay the H parts okay so if an ionic solute is soluble in water it is because the ion dipole interactions are strong enough to overcome the lattice energy of the salt crystal or the interaction between the ions in the crystal all right so in here we have a sample exercise we are going to predict whether the following solutes will dissolve in water so for example potassium chloride so that's basically uh, similar to salt and ACL this is an ionic compound and therefore we expect it to be polar okay and so if this is polar then it must be dissolved in water okay now for sucrose the structure is given here and also co uh, coconut oil now sucrose uh, will dissolve in water because of the presence of the OH bonds Okay, the plenty OH bonds allows it to have hydrogen bonds with water. Whereas uh, coconut oil, because of the presence of the long carbon chains here and the absence of the OH bonds, then most probably it will more likely uh, dissolve in a non-polar solvent than it would in a polar solvent. So we expect a coconut oil to be uh, not soluble or insoluble in water. And here are other examples. So vitamin C, very familiar. So we also see the presence of the OH bonds, the hydroxyl group, and therefore we expect them to be participating in hydrogen bonding with water all right so we consider vitamin c to be soluble however vitamin a has long carbon very long carbon carbon chains and uh, very limited oh groups and therefore we say that uh, vitamin a is insoluble in water okay as a matter of fact vitamin a vitamin d and vitamin E and K are fat soluble instead of water soluble vitamins so take note that we take them in as micronutrients and then it's it's vitamin C that can easily be secreted through the urine okay while vi vitamin A and vitamin ADEC vitamin A D E and K that's vitamin ADEC these are non polar substances nonpolar molecules so most likely they will be soluble in nonpolar mol other nonpolar solvents as well such as fat okay that's why we can we call vitamin adec fat soluble vitamins all right so vitamin c is water soluble any excess molecules are excreted by the body through the kidneys okay producing a characteristic yellow color in the urine all right so that's what if you've noticed if you drink anavon c or whatever vitamin c there is so you can uh you expect your urine to be colored yellow and then in here we have a certain condition uh which we call hypervitaminosis a okay this is a result on an excess of vitamin a deposited in the body Okay, it's stored in the fat cells because again vitamin A is a fat soluble molecule so it stays with with the fats because they are they are nonpolar and then if there is an excess okay we see a yellow colored skin and then that medical condition is hypervitaminosis A All right so those are practically some examples and applications of solutions as whether a substance is soluble or insoluble the IMF that are uh, involved so we say that they are there are ion dipole forces uh, what else hydrogen bonding and London dispersion forces 
uh, that are interacting, that are at play in the solution process. Okay, so take note uh, of the mechanisms of how solutions form. So for now, we take a, br a break, uh, do some push-ups, or have a cup of coffee. <laughs> 